All right, welcome back, YouTube. Uh, this is that engine that I got in the mail. This is a two thousand. This is a one hundred percent two thousand two uh, ZR eight hundred carved model, of course. Um, I got this whole thing, which this isn't all of it. Obviously, there's parts missing. <laughs> Look at the damage on that sucker. I mean, how long would you run this thing? For it to get damaged like that. Are you freaking kidding me? I mean, gosh, what is the matter with people? I really don't understand. So, this has the 33 millimeter crank on it that I want. So, uh, I was getting ready to pull the, the, um, this piston here and figured I would show you guys how this works. So, on either side of the wrist pin inside here that holds the piston. To the connecting rod there is a pin that goes all the way through uh, that goes through a bearing that's on the inside of the connecting rod you know obviously i'm sure there's you know most of you guys know what's going on here but you know for those of you that don't that's the needle bearing in there so oops so um what is on either side of these pins and this is the pin that's in there and what I'm trying to get out. There are what's called circlips and the circlips are these right here. And they just go in, you got a uh, the that little space right there is so you can get them in a little groove that's on the inside and those should be up and you know up the up or down. So that space should be at the bottom or at the top here. You don't want it sideways because it'll, over time, it'll compress that spring and it'll it can come out. So you want it up or down. Um, so those are on either side. You pop one side out by sticking a screwdriver in here and then just popping the one side out and then the whole rest of it comes out. So you pop out one side, one of the circlips, and then you put a bolt. This is my setup here. It's just a bolt that goes all the way through. I got some washers with a nut on this side and it grabs the, uh, the it, I'm sorry, it grabs the pin right here from this side with that bolt that runs all the way through. And then this is just a socket. Um, I mean, it's gotta be like an inch and a quarter socket or something. Um, but that is so when you pull, well, let me go here first. These support the pressure on the socket, okay? And that's just the way I have it set up. You can, you know, if you got a thicker washer that'll go over there. This is just so none of this bends. And it pushes the, the it has weight, dis, pressure distribution. It's where it goes from the center here to the outside of this, basically. So the bolt goes all the way through. And then I just hold this with a pair of ice grips. And then I crank on this bolt here. And what it does is it, pulls the pin through and then it goes into this socket that's why the socket's here so uh that's how you pull those pins normally they're pretty easy to get out but this sucker i mean i had to make some adjustments some adjustments ooh, sorry to my method here and um yeah i just figured i'd show you guys how it works i mean it's pretty simple all this mess here. I was looking for a different nut to get on there. Cause one that I had that was a serrated flange nut, and it just wasn't giving me the room I needed, and blah blah blah. So the other thing I had to do to get this to even move was to heat the piston up with some map gas. Map gas. So yeah, I probably gotta heat it up again because it's been sitting for a minute. <laughs> I am going to put some eye protection on because you just never know what's going to happen here. <clears throat> All right. 
Yeah, it's warm, definitely. And then you just crank it. It's a slow process, especially when they're seized up in here like this. But they come out. Just gotta have some patience, know-how. It'll happen. Now, at first, it was pretty hard when I started cranking, but then I heated it up and then it loosened up. It's actually getting pretty loose now. You can see how far that's going in there. Then, once this comes out, then I'll be able to flip this thing over and really see what I'm working with. And I really hope that this crank is okay and that the bearings are okay and these rods are okay because I really don't want to have to pay another 150 bucks to send this thing out to have it the crank rebuilt and true and all that and the good thing about this purchase is that the two cranks, the 30 millimeter crank and then the 33 millimeter crank, they obviously are different on the PTO side where the clutch goes, but they're also different on the magneto or stator side. And so it's not big, you know, the stator's not different. Same stator, but different flywheel. So the taper for the flywheel is different on this as well. And I was told by uh, Northern Crankshaft, I think they're in Wisconsin, Minnesota, something like that. They said that they could pop, the, uh, they could pop the end off of my 30 millimeter crank if I wanted to, and then what's going on here? I feel like I reached a tough spot. And then they would put a 30, they would, they would pop the 30 millimeter end off mine, and then I could put a 33 millimeter end on it. They said they'd do that for 150. So I'm trying to save myself money here. I don't know if it's going to work. All right. I might have to get, ooh, it's just popping pieces of the pistons off, piston off. This thing's just fried, folks. Fried, I tell you. This side's a little had to grip it with. Oops, sorry about that. It's gonna be stubborn. Doesn't help that I got a little bit of oil on my gloves. It should go. Oh yeah, it's stopping right at the end here. Alright, so the problem I'm having is that ridge right there it's hitting that so I might have to try and find a but yeah look at the difference oh my lord yikes that is some craziness it's just straight up seized but it's aluminum and it's coming slow and slow and steady so let me find a different socket real quick if I can Wow. And that doesn't really seem... What were they... Th Is that normal? I'm going to have to look at a different piston and see how normal that mold is, you know? M-O-U-L-D. Let's see. 
I mean, that just seems like a real weak spot. I mean, you can't depend on just this here, I wouldn't think. I don't know. I'll have to look at another piston and, and compare it, which I don't have. Come out. Look at that. All those little particles get in there and just grind them up. I'll tell you what, man, this thing's pretty dang strong. This took a beating. Granted, it's only aluminum, but still, it kept going. Probably just, you know, it wasn't spinning at that point. All right, so this is what I decided to do. I got the engine. I'm going to take off the flywheel and stator first. That way I can get that taken care of. Out of Zive. And then I'll flip it over and I'll split the case. Okay, so these just get put on here, and you don't want to screw these bolts in too far. Because if you screw them in too far, they're going to catch the... The flywheel or the uh, stator you don't want to catch the stator scrap it up All right, so when you're putting this on, I, when you're putting this pulley on, uh, or this pulley puller, what you want to do is make sure that all these bolts on here are... Let me get my other glasses real quick. These bolts are all even. Like I said, don't screw them in all the way to where they hit the stator. But you want them all even. So when you look at this thing... It's, you know, pretty pretty darn parallel. And this from here to here is parallel from here to here on this surface. And then what that'll do is make sure that you got a good even pull across the whole surface here. All right, here we go. They just get it wedged in there like that and then you Let's give it some turns. 
looks like it's screwing in the bolt though. That's the only thing. Yeah, it is. So I am popping out this guy here. And I'm going to replace it with this one. Ah, there you go. All right, let's get her done. Just to make sure it doesn't spin. So you only need eighth of an inch space in there. All right, here we go. Let's do it. Are you ready? Got your safety glasses on. Goes. Sounds like you break it. But you just break it loose. That's it. I remember the first time I did this, I was like, whoa, holy man. See? All right. All right, so that is that. Oh, this is a pretty long bolt. There you go. Look at that big old honker of a washer. So that's that. Let me just pull this guy right off. Ooh, six, yeah, six mag. And there's a little bit of stuff in there, that's for sure. You see a little bit of, I don't know if you can actually, there you go. Some back there. It's just chips of magnets is really what it is. All right, there is the stator. So I'm going to pop the stator off. I'm going to turn it around. And then I'm going to pop the uh, PTO bearing plate off, and then we's going to flip it. And hey, I got something fun to share with you guys. Okay, so I got this set right here a long time ago, Husky, and I was, I've been using it for the past three years to get, you know, to work on snowmobiles and stuff, machines, whatever. Well, <laughs> this four millimeter I used evidently used on my brother's ZRT 800 brother-in-law so I ended up finding it when I was messing around with his sled I looked down I saw it sitting in a crack I could just barely see the four millimeter on it or maybe it said husky I think it was right there you could see a little bit of the millimeter and then the word husky and I was like no it's been gone for like two years I was like I went I went as far as buying another set not of these but a different one and uh, yeah, so I was so pumped to find that it's been it's been about a year and a half, year and a half, two years. So it's been lost in the bottom of that sled this whole time. And I was like, I'm never gonna find that thing. It probably came out and whatever. So yeah, I was pretty pumped up about that. The stupid things we get excited about when you're older. Kids get excited for ice cream. I get excited when I find a tool. <laughs> Oh, I wanted to show you guys, too, my new tool that I got. This thing, oh my gosh. Talk about a lifesaver. Impact driver. I never even heard of one of these until... I've had... It's funny because I've had, like, ideas like this. I was like, man, it'd be nice if there was something like that. And then I was informed of this this past year. And I finally 
picked one up. My buddy uh, John Goki Jr. on Facebook helped me out with that suggestion. So thanks, bud. So I want to show you guys that real quick. Awesome tool. And then come to find out, guys are like, yep, if you're a mechanic, you better have at least one of them in your shop. <laughs> so, got one. Get all this whole bunch of stuff out of here. The stator looks brand spanking new. Look at that. Sweet. That's in good condition, kids, fellas, peeps. All right. Um, I want to put that. Keep it nice and safe and sound in the box. This has got the. Oh, the other old two, and this one don't look bad either. So, got two. So I mean, if all the stuff works, you guys are gonna watch me build another 800 engine. So we keep these separate. I'll know the one on the top is. Okay, so this goes on the bottom too. This is a trigger coil. So there's a little thing on the flywheel. Right there. It's a little magnet. Goes past this way. And, you know, obviously, look, it's every 180 degrees. So it goes past there and triggers this. So this sends a little signal to the CDI box. And the CDI box is, stands for Capacitor Discharge Ignition. So you get a buildup of electricity in that capacitor. In the CDI box, and that trigger coil, once the magnet passes it, and it'll get past every 180 degrees for the for the engine because it's a twin. So what'll happen is it tells the CDI box to release that. It like opens a gate and allows that voltage to come out and go into the uh, spark coils and. It goes into the primary winding, and the primary winding is just two little, the two little leads on a on the coil. And so it goes in there, and it's got a little coil in there. And when the electricity goes through there, it excites a bigger coil that will put out. It'll go from 12 volts that these produce to 20,000 volts. It shoots that through the coil to the spark plug. Boom! That's how it's able to jump that that uh, electrode. Alright, so that's safe and sound. Put that up. And you know, I like to clean these out. I'll blow these out with air and then get whatever dust I can up there. And then I'll take a tack cloth and run it in there. That's what I found works the best. Oh, look. There's the hole right there. Pow. Man. That's too bad, but whatever. That's the way the cookie crumbles. Liar, liar, if you haven't seen it. Uh, let's see, nine, these cases are labeled with 
the number of the bolt that's supposed to be torqued. So it's got the torque sequence right on the case. So 10. Okay, so we're going to start here and reverse it. Ah, oh, there we go. I don't think those are fours. Fives? This goes three... F I think it's got three, four, five, six... Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and ten millimeter. There you go. Stator plate. That's the other. Um, oil seal. All right, let's put it back up on the blocks. This regular. Oh. That's another case I can have fixed. All right. Oh. Yeah. It's, I mean, I might have one good bearing, but the sucky thing is, is that I think these two inner bearings are done which that really sucks well see if you guys can hear this Okay, it's just not high enough. Doesn't that sound smooth like it should? Oi! So, and you can see all the little bits of crap in there. Son of a stinking gun. Well, it's not back to the drawing board. It's just new bearings. Shoot, man. This thing's going to be, like, brand new. That's the bright side, folks. That's the bright side. All right. That's about it. Okie dokie. Thanks a lot, guys. Um, hope you enjoyed the video. And like I said, uh, more to come. Obviously, we know what's in store at this point. And... Um, what's going to have to be done so it looks like new bearings but as long as the crank is good to go um then we should be good tough crank and then uh bearings powder coating reassembly new top end gasket kit oil seals and then a clutch and then it can all get put back together and then i'm gonna hit the skid so skid's gonna be rebuilt as well so I got to hustle if I want to get this done. So, all right, guys. Thanks a lot. Um, like I said, like, subscribe, share, comment. Uh, let me know what you guys think. And um, 
Make sure you hit the alert button or the alert bell so you guys are updated. Okay. All right, guys. Take care. Thanks a lot. God bless.